from the VMware campus in Palo Alto, California. It's theCUBE, covering women transforming technology. I'm Lisa Martin with theCUBE and we are on the ground in Palo Alto at VMware headquarters for the third annual Women Transforming Technology event. Excited to be speaking with Kathy Chow, the VP of R&D Operations and Central Services from VMware. Kathy, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you as well. So third annual Women Transforming Technology event. Um, sold out within hours. It was standing room only in the keynote this morning. We got to hear from Layla Ali. So inspiring, what a strong female who used the word purpose a lot during her, her talk this morning. You're a mom of four boys. You've been a female in tech for a long time now. What is it that has kept you in tech and pursuing a career in technology as a leader? Well, I have been in tech for over 25 years uh, and it has been an absolute amazing journey from early career to mid career to now I'm going to say mid to late career. Uh, it's just a passion that I've had. I was a, when I was a young girl, I was just good in math and science and I pursued that passion. Uh, ended up with a mechanical engineering degree. And there were many steps along the way where you know, I was getting discouraged. Why do you want to do this tech thing? You should maybe drop out, do something else. But I'm so glad I stuck with it. And really, as you mentioned, the four boys, I want to be an example for my sons because I want them to understand that there can be women with all sorts of talents. And if they happen to find someone who is technical and wants to do something in this world or do something in high tech or management or whatever that is, that they support them in any, any, every way, shape, or form. How have you gotten the coveted or sought after work-life balance? What are some of your tips and tricks we can learn from? Well, first of all, I call it work-life integration because it's really not a balance. You've got to integrate it. And you know, one of the things I've also, first thing, I've chosen companies that really believe in that. VMware is a company that really believes in this, bringing your authentic self to work and, and making sure that you can integrate your work with your life. And you need to have that balance. In fact, I do a, a career journey. And when I talk about my career journey, there's above the line, below the line. And above the line is the work stuff. And below the line is the life stuff. And you need to make sure that they're equally full. Because I believe that if you have a very, very full and busy life outside of work, it'll actually make you a better employee. So I encourage my folks as a leader now, I'm, I'm finally a leader and I manage a team, that if folks have to go and do something in the middle of the day, doctor's appointment, do something with a kid, go do it. Because as long as you get your job done, you can integrate both work and life. I love that, I think you're absolutely right that it isn't a balance, it's integration, they have to work together. So from, from your career in mechanical engineering, what were some of the things that, that were you just sort of born with this innate, this is, I'm really interested in this in terms of, of keeping your head down and focused and, and getting into a fairly male dominated um, uh, industry and field. Was it just sort of that innate that you were born with? Hey, I like this. I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm in a male dominated field, but I don't care. Yeah, it kind of was because you know, my love, so they had two focus areas in mechanical engineering. One was material science. I just loved material science. I don't know. And so I ended up working for my first job out of Stanford was um, Instron Corporation, which is a materials testing firm. My other love was robotics. So I had actually worked for GM on the production line and, and helped program some of those early robots. And so I was able to combine those two passions when I ended up going to uh, Instron and develop their robotics line. Now here's the thing, as I'm going through all of this, am I looking around and realizing, my goodness, there's no other females here. That was the case, but my passion for learning new things and doing something and making a difference seem to outstrip the fact that there weren't females. And now that as I'm getting, again, more advanced in my career, I'm realizing that I have a duty to play as a role model to say, hey, you can do it. You can have a family. You can have a great job. You can have great life outside of work, you know, as long as you integrate all of those things. And so I think with that perseverance, that's how you can get through. And I think that there's such a need for those role models because like we were talking about Leila Ali this morning who clearly was born with this natural confidence, um, which not a lot of women are, yes. not a lot of people are yes. in general. So I think it's really um, important that you've recognized you ha you're in this position to be a mentor. Mm -hmm. What are some of the, how do you advise 
either women that are in their early stage careers or even those maybe in the middle of their careers that are, that are pondering, yeah. hey, I don't see any or a lot of strong female leaders in the executive suite. Should I stay here? You had that internally, but what's your advice to women who might be at that crossroads? Yeah. I think the first and most important thing is it takes courage to stay the course. I know that sounds a little odd, but don't, don't care about what you see around yourself, right? Just know about what do you love? What is your passion? You know, and I always say that there's something I call the sweet spot. It's where your passion meets your talent. And if you're in a place like that, you're in a very special place because that means it's a strength of yours that you also love. And if you do that, it doesn't matter who else is around you. You know, one thing Layla said that I really loved and I really, really believe in myself is preparation. Uh, you know, you have to be prepared. So if as long as you are prepared, that's what gives you the confidence. You, we don't, okay, maybe she was born <laughs> confident. She came out of the womb confident. I certainly wasn't. I was someone who grew up with, I had really lacked a lot of self-confidence. I was painfully shy. I had trouble speaking in front of people. And I worked very, very hard. I was prepared to get over that fear. You know, I put myself, she mentioned this thing about being uncomfortable. And I think I put myself in a lot of uncomfortable situations as well. It was really resonating with what she said, speaking in front of large audiences. In fact, I used to memorize a lot of my speeches, and then I would remember, I would forget it in the middle of it, and I would be horrified. And, but you know what? You do a few of those things, you get better and better at it. And if you just get out of that comfort zone and you have those little butterflies, if you, I always say if you have those butterflies, you're stretching, you're learning, and that's what helps you achieve. I couldn't agree more. I think that, you know, I always say get comfortably uncomfortable. Yeah. No matter what you're doing, if it's, in, if it's you know, above the line or below the line, as you were saying before. But you're right. She talked about preparation, being prepared. And, you know, we, we talk a lot about imposter syndrome. Mm -hmm. Oftentimes at these uh, at women in technology events, just because it comes up, it's something that I didn't even know what it was until a few years ago. And I think just simply finding out that this is a legitimate issue that many people face of any industry, gender, you name it, that alone, knowing that that was legitimate was, okay, I'm not alone here, but it's if you can go, let me prepare and, and get prepared for what I need to do, mm -hmm. That preparation part is, I think, a huge key that if more people understand, just work and be prepared. You're not alone in feeling that. Sort of maybe setting the bar or level setting there, I think that can go a long way to helping those women in any stage of their career just get that little bit more courage that you yes. said that you need to get out of that comfort zone. And I agree, I think, I think goals that make you a little nervous are good goals to have. I totally agree. I have some tips on how to get out of that comfort zone or get in get in, out of your comfort zone. So s I find, okay, you know, there's always the smartest person in the room, right, thing that you hear about. And forget about that, okay? Ask questions. And you always hear this, there's no such thing as a dumb question. There really is no such thing. I know how many times someone has asked a question, has, I had that question. Absolutely. And actually it's a brilliant way to get to be heard. Because a lot of times, you know, a lot of women, it doesn't, actually, woman, it doesn't matter. A woman, underrepresented minority, could be a white male who's shy, right? It's just in an inclusive environment. If you don't speak up, people, you're not heard. And a lot of the brilliant things that people have are those questions that people have. Because if they don't, if they, if, if they don't understand something, I'm sure there's someone else who doesn't either. And so if you just ask some questions, you'll find that you'll get that courage to ask a few more, and then eventually you get to the point where you actually can advocate. I agree, you have, to, you have to be willing to try, and I love that. So the theme of this event, inclusion in action. Yes. I'd love to get your perspective on how do you see inclusion in action here at VMware in engineering, for example, in R&D? Yes, first of all, I'm on the Diversity and Inclusion Council. So I represent R&D, yes. I just had a meeting with Betsy Sutter. We had our Diversity and Inclusion Council for VMware, so I was representing R&D. So it's something that's very, very important to us. Um, one thing I will say that I've learned at this conference is it's not about the stats. It's not about the fact that you have meetings or goals. It's something you must internalize. It's something, and as a leader, I think it's my job and duty to exude it. You know, through example, through being inclusive, and to making sure, like I was at an event the other day here at VMware, and uh, I was talking about, I was at the Watermark Conference, and I was basically doing a replay of what I did at the Watermark Conference. And in there I saw three men. 
And I said to myself, you know what? We need more men in this, we need more men at this event. And so even at this conference today, I want to see more men. It's all about inclusion, right? And I think people sometimes forget that even though it says women transforming technology, men, women, whatever your sexual orientation, whatever that is, we all care about how women can transform technology. You don't have to be a woman to do that. Right. Well, one of the things that came out today was the great news about this massive investment that VMware is doing, 15 million, um, <laughs> to create this lab at Stanford, yeah. this innovation lab, and we were talking with Betsy earlier, and actually in the press release, it, it, stayed, it cited that McKinsey report that mm -hmm. states that, that companies that have a more diverse executive yes. team, no stats or anything, more diverse, are 21% more profitable. And it just seems like a no-brainer. Every company wants to be profitable, right, except an, an NPO. So if all you need to do is increase that, that thought diversity alone, and you're more profitable, why is this so difficult for so many other organizations to culturally get in, adopt that mindset? Yeah, I, what's, what I find fascinating is Diversity and inclusion is obviously a very hot topic in Silicon Valley, right? Every company is either fear, they're fearing of getting, having their numbers publicly outed, or you know, they're working on these things, and yet we're doing a lot of things, but the needle isn't moving, right? So then, I think it was mentioned today by um, a professor from Stanford, she was saying, there's not a silver bullet. There's, you know, so, and some of these things will take a long time. One of the things that we talked about um, was this pipeline of, it doesn't matter, again, young women, underrepresented minorities, whatever you say in the STEM fields, we need to encourage more of that, okay? And so, what's interesting is there's more, f well, certainly more females than males that are graduating, right, these days, yet, when you start off in a high-tech company, you will see quite a bit of balance between male and female, I'll just use that as an example. It's even worse as far as, far as under, underrepresented minorities. But as you move up the chain, what happens is the numbers just fall off. And one of the things, root causes, that I see as an issue is that when these women look up at the top and say, I don't see women, or if I'm a person of color, I don't see a person of color in this leadership position, why should I continue? And then you see just a lot of attrition happening at those levels. And so what it takes is, every single one of us internalizing how important this is. And I think when that happens, when it's not a, oh, it's a project, or oh, it's an initiative, or oh, it's a goal. And this, by the way, may take a decade or more. But once we all internalize this, I think that's when the needle's going to move. Yeah, we talked a lot earlier today about accelerating this. Because you're right, the attrition rates are incredibly high. Much higher for women leaving technology than leaving other industries. Um, and, and a lot of women are looking for those role models. Yes. Like, like somebody like you, for example. But um, I think the more awareness, the more consistent awareness we can get. And also the fact that you know, in the last six months we've had the Me Too movement explode onto mm -hmm. the scene, getting this unlikely alliance with Hollywood, Time's Up, Brotopia coming out a couple of months ago, and was something that I actually put off reading because I thought, I don't think I want to know. And I thought, actually, yes, I do. Because there, there's no reason that these things should continue. Right. But to your point, it's not just about getting more women involved. It's really about integrating and including everybody. Absolutely. To move the needle, but much faster. It's half of 2018 is almost over. There were no big females on stage for CES five months ago. And there's really no reason for that. So the more we can all come together and just identify role models and examples and share the different things that we've been through, the more I think we can impact this acceleration of this movement. Totally agree. I actually have a thought, you know, that you just triggered around perhaps accelerating this in the best way we can, knowing, again, there's no silver bullet. But I was at my business school reunion and I was shocked to see that 80% of my business school graduates were not working. And what happened is many of these women had taken jobs in consulting firms, investment banking firms that weren't that friendly. You know, and when they started to have children, they stopped out. And they didn't want to compromise their family. Who does? Nobody wants to do that. But when they wanted to come back, they found that they had either gotten off the, you know, they called the mommy track, right? They train left the station, they couldn't make it back on, or they weren't willing to take a lower job. And so because of that, many of them ended up not working and that, and you know that's sad because these are really really smart these were harvard brilliant. graduates right? they are harvard business school graduates 
um, that were not working. And so, like you said, it requires everyone to understand, right? It's the employers. A lot of these men need to understand that women, if they want, and by the way, it's not even women these days. It's young men who want to be with their families as well. Paternity leaves, time off with the kids, um, those sorts of things. You have to, if you allow those people that freedom, you know, when I was young, I felt like I went through this by myself. So I had three kids, five and under. I was, my career was not progressing. I was just doing lateral moves and I didn't feel like I was successful in anything. Not successful in my job, not successful at home. And then I had no friends because I was too busy at work and home. But if I had more of a support network at the time, fortunately I didn't drop out. I could have, I think many people do. So if we can provide more support at that really important time when they're raising their families, people can see that, hey, I can have a great family life and also a great work life. So key, just for support alone. And that's one of the things that I, I think is really exciting about women transforming technology. It's this consortium of organizations and industry and academia and nonprofits coming together to, to, to identify and tackle these issues mm -hmm. that we're facing. Because the issues that women are facing are issues that corporations, profitable corporations are facing. But to connect on these uh, these challenge points, support, provide that support in that network, and also, to your point, maybe even providing uh, an unlikely mentor to yes. somebody who in, might have been in your position where, I don't feel like I'm being successful anywhere, but you stuck with it, and you might have at times gone, I don't know why I'm sticking with this, but you had you know, some in, intestinal fortitude mm -hmm. to do that. More of those um, supportive and mentoring voices and people, the more we can elevate them and, and you know, uh, show them to other people who might be struggling, the better we're going to be able to move this needle. Completely agree. And you know what? They always say it takes a village, right? It takes a village to raise a family. It takes a village to work and do what you need to do and make a change in the world. And we all need to do this together. And by the way, there's nothing more inclusive than that, is there? Right. We all have to deal with this. doesn't matter your sexual orientation, your age, your gender, your ethnicity, it doesn't matter. We all share in this common bond, right, around how do we integrate our work and our life. Kathy brilliantly said, thank you so much for stopping by theCUBE and, and sharing your experiences and your wisdom. I, for one, was very inspired, so thank you. Thank you, time. I was inspired as well. Oh, <laughs> really appreciate thank it. You. Thank you. Thank you for watching theCUBE. We are on the ground at VMware for the Women Transforming Technology event. Thanks for watching.